Welcome back Fusion 360 for Woodworkers. We're continuing building out the bookcase and today I want to replicate the drawers that we've already made using the copy, paste new and joint commands. That sounds good. Stick around. In today's lesson, I want to show how we can take a sub-assembly, such as drawers that we've already made, and use the copy and paste new command, but then use the joint command to not only put them in the position, but to give them the constrained movement that we saw in the last episode. A lot quicker than you think, and a lot quicker than recreating the drawers or the components every single time. Let's dive straight in and have a look at how we're going to do that. So here's our bookcase. Last time we created this rather beautiful drawer here and we gave it some motion. So all these drawers now open and close, which is looking pretty sweet. But we still need to put some drawers inside here. Now we could go ahead and we could put the front panel on and we could create the dovetails and put the sides on. But why bother? Because we know that all these are the same size and I've got the right size drawers now. So wouldn't it be really neat if we could just copy these and paste them? Well, we can, but the catch is that if you just copy and paste and put them into position, when we resize the bookcase, that wouldn't resize accordingly, or it might resize, but it wouldn't be in the right position. So I want to find a way of taking one of these drawers, and we'll start with this large one, and putting it in here and telling Fusion that's where I live. So when we resize the bookcase, everything resized, but it maintains its position. And don't forget, I also want the drawers to be able to open and close in the right direction. So let's look at how we're going to do that. Now the first thing I want to do, I want to turn off these joints because they're beginning to annoy me a little bit now, these little symbols. So I'm going to come up here to the side menu and highlight on the joints. And you can see here, these are all the joints that we've got. I can just turn those off. And similarly inside the drawer, you can see I get these joints as well. And I can just come ahead and I can turn those off. Now the joints don't go away. All we're doing here is just turning off the symbols. So the joints are still in place. And for God's sake, don't delete those joints because you'll have problems. But it just cleans up the diagram because I don't like having those joint symbols everywhere. Okay, position, revert just to put them back into place. So I'm gonna take this large drawer and we're now going to put it in here. So the first thing is I want to make a copy of that drawer. Come to your side menu, right click on the side menu, come down here and click on copy. Then just left click anywhere in the space just to deselect it, right click again in the white space and click paste. Now that's made a copy of that drawer and when it copies and pastes like that, it puts it directly on the piece you just made it. So grab your arrow and just slide it out of the way so you can see what you're working on, like so. So we've now got a drawer over here and we want to bring it into position here. Now we know from the last episode that the assemble joint command will actually bring things into their final position and that's what we're going to use here. So bring in the joint command. Now joint commands really are quite advanced and we can do a lot of things. We've done very, very simple things by gluing things together and maybe just moving things around. But don't forget, we can not only join things together, either using a simple joint, a between two faces joint, or an intersection joint. We could also set the motion path of this. We had rigid, we had revolute, we had slider, we had cylindrical, pin slot, planar, and ball joints, and we know that we're interested in the slider joint. So watch what we're going to do here. We're going to create the position. What do I want to do? Well, I want a simple joint. So my first component is going to be on this drawer here. And if we zoom in to this drawer, you can see when I put my cursor on there, it gives me the various edges. I want to slide down to this front edge and bring the mouse along till I snap in there to that center point. That's the first thing I want, that center point of that edge there. I'm now going to come in to this one, to the second component, and I'm going to slide in to this middle drawer, and I'm going to slide along that front edge as well. Now when I come to the centre and press my cursor, you're going to see the front panel move over, and it's probably going to animate as well. So there it goes, moving over, and look, it's animating as well. Now it's going backwards and forwards because our motion path is already set. We set that to 
a slider. But what I want to do is to show you, if I just set that to a rigid joint, it's now locked into this base panel, and OK. And although it puts all the drawer in position, that drawer won't move. It's glued in and it's locked in to position. So I'm just going to do Control and Z, and I'm just going to undo that rigid joint that we've just made. So I can show you the full <laughs> process here. Assemble, joint. We're going to do a simple joint, select component one, which is going to be the front edge, the midpoint, select component two, which is going to be the middle container, the top edge, but that front edge, the mid joint, and that's going to bring it into place. But now it's made a rigid joint, and it's made the rigid joint because that's what it's defaulted to, because that's the last one we use. And now I'm going to select slider, I don't want a rigid joint, and you can see it's trying to work out which direction. It's done a Z axis so far, and we can see on the animation that that's going side to side, which is maybe great for a sliding door, but not what I want for my drawers. So let's try the X axis. Now you can see that's going to give me the guillotine, which I don't want, uh, therefore it must have been the Z axis. No, nope. <laughs> the Y axis, sorry. So you can now see it's moving in and out. So what we've done, we've created the position by using the front edges, the center points of the front edges, and we've created the motion against the Y axis, and we've done all that in one command. And when I click OK, dunk, everything is now in the right place. And that draw is doing what we need it to do. And over here, you can see it's giving me a second instance of the large draw, large draw number two. So we can now do the same again into this space. Right click in the white space, paste. That's going to give me a new instance of the draw. We're going to drag it over so it's out of the way so we can work on it and click OK. We're going to come into the assemble. We're going to select the joint command. Now it's saying, do I want to capture this position? And actually, no, I don't. Remember that error? Because that, because I've opened that draw a little bit, I want to close that draw. So position and revert. Now I can come into the assemble, come into the joint command. I want to select my first point, which we know is the bottom edge of the draw unit in the center, there. I want to select my second one, which we know is going to be the bottom edge here, which is going to be there. We know we want the motion here to be a slider and we want it on the Y axis and I can just animate it to check everything's looking good. Perfect, okay, bang. And now we've got this draw in position doing what we need it to do and that's giving me large draw number three. I'm just gonna hide that large draw because I want to show you something here before we go to the small draw. And I just want to turn off as well just those, um, those joints just so they're not in my way and distracting me. Now what's what happens, when I put my mouse over this edge here, you can see that dark line, that dark line beginning to appear. And this dark line runs from this side of the cabinet here to this side of the cabinet here. And that makes sense because when we did the sliding dovetails on the panels, we intersected that board. So we know that the center point of this line must be directly in the center of these two panels. So that's why that method works. But look at this end panel. When I put my mouse on here, can you see that dark line? That dark line is running from here all the way to the end. So when I set the center point of this line, that's going to be between this side panel and the outside of this panel. So the drawer's going to be in the wrong place. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to come into the small drawer now. I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to come into the white space and I'm going to paste it and then I'm going to drag the arrow and I'm just going to move it out of the way so I can work on it. And now that's given me the small draw on the left hand side here, box over on the right. Now you can see that's in the wrong place. Now we're going to use exactly the same technique. I'm going to come to assemble, I'm going to come to joint, see capture the position again. Um, I don't want to capture that position, let's revert everything. Every time that you slide a drawer in and out, you're changing the position of it from where you jointed it. That's why you get that error. Assemble, joint. Now we're going to use the same technique. So we've got the simple mode and we've got the same motion. So we're going to use everything the same. Let's select the first point, which we know is going to be in the center here. 
happy days. Let's select the second point that we know is going to be in the center here, happy days. And now that's going to put it into position. So let's OK this. Now if you look at our draw, you can see that the draw is offset a little bit here. And that's because this front line that we centered up on runs from this panel here to the outside of this panel here. So we need to allow for that in our joint command. Now if we measure this gap, inspect there to there, you can see that gap is 8.5 millimeters. Now that 8.5 millimeters is actually half of the stock. I'm not even gonna say, hold on a minute, Andy, the stock is 18 millimeters and half of 18 is nine. But we allow for a half a millimeter offset all the way around on this front panel. And that's where that half a millimeter comes into. So if we could move this panel back in this direction by half the stock distance, minus the total um, offset, the 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 for one millimeters, this should now sit in the right place. So we come back into the slider and we edit that joint. And if we now come down here, and it should be the Z offset, but you can check that by pulling the arrow and just sliding it back in two, and you can see the Z offset moving there. I want to move this back by minus the stock thickness, divided by two, and you can see that's gonna put it over there, but it still leaves this gap add the one millimeter back for all the way around now that's giving me the joint that we need and you can see it's reverted back to the half millimeter distance all the way around that draw bring the drawers back in so i'm just going to turn off all these markings now i don't want them anymore so i'll come up to joints at the top here and just turn that off and then come down to those drawers that we just made and then turn off all these joints inside these drawers um, like so and that tidies everything up quite nicely for you and if we've done our job correctly everything should resize so let's make the bookcase height i don't know three meters high let's make the bookcase width 500 wide and let's make the length five meters long and let's change the stock thickness to something stupid like 30. okay and there we go everything is resized and rescaled pretty well the drawers are still sliding in and out you can see all the dovetails have resized quite nicely on these drawers looking really quite pleasant i think and it's all looking good just as you'd expect it to so I'm happy with that. Just going to undo all those measurement changes. And that's pretty much it. The quick and easy way of using the copy and the paste and the joint and the offsets inside the joint command to do something like that. Looks really complicated, but when you break it down, it's really, really neat. Now the final thing I want to look at today, and we probably should have done this earlier on, is just talk about saving. One of our viewers came in and said, hey Andy, I'm following along on the course, but I've managed to lose everything because I've not managed to save effectively, so I'm going to redo it all, but can you tell me the right strategy for saving? Now Fusion 360 is a cloud-based solution, and it will auto-save as you go along. So when you make any real changes, it will sync back into the cloud, and that will give you your save feature. But it is possible to force it to save, and you can put a version control inside that. Let's have a quick look at that before we close today. So it's super simple. Come to the top left hand corner here and click on save. And it brings up this save menu, version description. Okay, let's say that we've now reached a milestone here and that milestone is draws. So I'm gonna put draws complete. And I'm gonna say that that's a milestone. So I then have the version description draws complete and you can see it's dropped in a milestone, milestone version 1.1 and if you look up here at the top you can see my last version was 1.0. Now I do save as I go along so once I finish a lesson and we've reached a step I actually go through this and save it down which is why I've got so many versions. You can change that, you can change that to whatever you want it to but I just find it easier to use version 11 and click OK. Now when you come back into your data panel at the side and just flick back into the bookcase project. If you click on this arrow here and you can see my bookcase design 2020 with a 
sketch of the last thing we saved, if I just click the down arrow, and you can see it'll start to give me version control, and it gives me all the 11 versions that I've created. So if I wanted to roll back because I've made a mistake, I can just double click on any of these, and it will come back to where it needs to be. Now, although it's not showing up for some reason on my computer, just here to the right-hand side where it's got my name, there's a small pull-down menu, and inside there you can open it or edit the milestone if it's the current one. If I go down to a previous one, you can see I can open it or I can promote it. Now, if I click Promote here, that would lose all the version history above this one, and then this would be the latest project I'm working on. So if you are following along, every time you reach a milestone, save it down, that will give you a version history and you can roll back to pretty much any period if you do make some mistakes. So I hope you found that useful. Next time we'll start the work on the raised panel doors and we'll get those into place. See you next time.